All right, back with another exciting installment of uh, freedom information. <laughs> um, this one's going to be on the Declaration of Independence, okay? Or what is it the Declaration of Independence? <laughs> oh dear, I tell you, the mind boggles. I've just been watching a guy, binge watching a guy that I've just found. Um, this is a little sub story to what I'm going to go into. Um, the guy's name is Romley, I think it's Romley, R-O-M-L-E-Y Stewart, um, I don't know if I'm even saying that right, anyway, that's the guy's name, his channel is Justinian Deception, and there's also another channel called uh, the Glosser Channel, and I'll put those down in the below description thing. Anyway, um, he talks a lot about the grammar and the way um, legal documents are written, which is very interesting. Um, he talks about um, the way um, the all upper uppercase, the capitalized um, writing, is actually not real proper writing if you like to call it that it's um, a foreign language it's made up it's bastardized whatever but the, the fact of the matter is it's not proper english okay and that's what we should be dealing in because that's why everybody speaks anyway it's very interesting the way documents are written um and what is real and what's not real the only thing i can do is say go over to him he can explain this stuff much better than i can I had, I had heard about some of this stuff before, like I picked up on some stuff in some documents that I would found um, that use talk about dog Latin, um, and he calls it dog Latin, but he also calls it American Sign Language as well. Um, and I don't I I don't know enough about it to get into that, but it. But it's very interesting, okay, because we get into all these differences in the birth certificate and the, the differences in names and the way we use, you know, the normally written English style. And then we go into the upper, into the capitalized names and all this stuff. Very worthwhile finding out about. Um, but anyway, when I was watching this, I was thinking, yeah, well, I've heard about this before and I know about the capitalized and I know about... Um, I've heard about dog Latin and the fact that that's not a proper language and all this stuff. He explains it's perfect. Um, but I thought, you know what? It got me thinking about the Declaration of Independence because this is where I've been looking at. I think the Declaration of Independence, bear with me on this one, I'm going to keep calling it the Declaration of Independence because people won't call it its proper name because um, they don't know what that is. But the Declaration of Independence, I think, is the most important document um, that we have. And it's, in a way, I was, I was thinking about going in and looking, about, uh, looking up the acceptance of it and seeing when it was, and going into all the ratification and all, and whether old Georgie Porgy accepted it and um, so forth and so on. But that's really irrelevant because a declaration doesn't have to be accepted. Okay, um, a declaration under God is simply um, telling the world what your intentions are. It's just a, a common decency thing. Um, and the declaration, of course. It's the reason why it doesn't need to be um, approved, uh, you know, I don't know, accepted by whoever was in charge before. The reason why it doesn't need to be accepted by them is, number one, there's a good chance that he was a, f a fiction anyway and couldn't have accepted it anyway. <laughs> and the other, I mean, the only thing a fiction can really do is just 
not do anything and accept it that way. But um, the other thing is, if as long as you're not encroaching on anybody else's rights um, when you make your declaration, and you're entitled to those to, to make that declaration under God, it doesn't it doesn't matter a damn who. Um, you don't need any approvals. What I'm saying, okay. Anyway, let's get into the Declaration of Independence. I have a transcript here, um, and if you look at the top there, actually, I can't even bring it up tight enough, but you'll see that's all capitalised where it says Declaration of Independence. Well, if you go down on that next line um, to where actually, well, I'll read it to you anyway. But this this little bit right. Let me point to it. Oh gosh, where's my finger? Here we are. Hang on a minute. Turn it that way. Oh geez, Dan, this is terrible. Here we go. This, this little bit here. This little bit at the top here. Just above my finger. Let me read it. That's ridiculous what I was doing there. Sorry about that. But what it actually says, it says the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. In proper English. When you read the thing, it goes on to, to say that we are going to declare our impellus to separate from whoever the king is. Um, but the actual title of the document is not the Declaration of Independence. So my point here is, if you're going to use this as a reference, um, that our founding fathers and they sign it and it's interesting because if you look at an actual proper copy of instead of a transcript like this piece of shite if you look at a proper copy you'll actually see the proper English even on this transcript the first the when is capitalized right at the start of this as well when in the course of human well again they've bastardized this 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 document um, anyway if you are going to refer to it just put it in damn brackets and then actually use the proper title the, the, the unanimous declaration of the 13 states of america because that's the proper title of the document you're really referring to so this is the point i'm making is if you're going to use an example, say you're writing a declaration um, of intent. If you're going to cite, if you're going to cite something like this, that's an important thing to know. Okay, those, I mean, the people in charge are probably, oh look at this idiot. He's this idiot here is referring to. I mean, get over the constitutional rights thing, and everybody's saying, oh, it's our constitutional rights, this, that, and the other. Then people cotton on to natural law and cotton on to the Declaration of Independence. And everybody's, oh, the Declaration of Independence says this. And all these people that are creating the system are saying, look, these idiots, they think it's called the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> it's not, you know. It's just like they could, if they can bastardize it, that, that's what they've done, you know. If they can uh, try and you know, undermine its authority some way. That's what's happened. Anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about. Because the more I examine, anyway, the more I examine all this stuff, the more I believe, the more I'm comprehending or understanding natural law. Um, and I don't mind using understanding natural law. Um, but the more I comprehend natural law, the more I think it's the right way to do things. Um, and this is probably not what the authorities want you to know. Um, this guy over at um, this other channel, the one I was just talking about, he says he's had uh, you know, a lot of hassle from the cops and everything. Um, but he, the way he's doing stuff, He's still operating within the system. He's still looking for an answer within the system. 
Um, and he's got, he's obviously studied the Bible because he knows a lot about that as well. And, um, but I do believe that the answer is not within the system. The answer can never be within the system. There's just going to be, you know, another level of a trap to get people. This is why I was looking at, this is why I thought, you know what, I'm going to go back and look at the Declaration of Independence. Because, is it another little, another little trap? And, it appears that if you're going to call it the Declaration of Independence, then it is another trap. If you call it what it is, the 30, and, the, and if you're going to call it where it really what it is, does it apply to you now? Yeah, it does, because this is something that's been recognised within the legal system, okay? Which is great, because it gives, it definitely gives us a foundation for natural law being the law of the land. These are the founding fathers that um, signed all this stuff, and if you look at their signatures, they're correct and everything. But he does go into the surname and whether the um, the surname that you inherit or that you're given um, essentially comes from the system you see and is that another acceptance of their jurisdiction over you I say no and I say it for this reason because no one man has an authority over an actual real name okay and this gets into all copyright stuff and you can understand if this is a if this uppercase stuff at the top here is not actual proper english and it's actually a symbol or a sign then it can be copyrighted it can be trademarked whereas uh, a name I believe a name cannot be copyrighted because I got into this a while back watching videos on um, people trying to copyright their name <laughs> you know and other people say you you're an idiot you can't copyright a name and all this stuff well the likelihood is is that they probably have your surname copyrighted and they probably have an uppercase version of your first name copyrighted um, but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter what they, the hell they do because it's that's within their system they can do what the hell they like it doesn't mean jack shit to a normal guy that uses English um, I'm sorry to use the, uh, the swear words there but I, shall, I need to keep a bit better um, control of that um, apologize but um, anyway where was I going so they use so when they sign the, the end of the Declaration of Independence, I'm sorry this is such a waffly video, but when they sign the, the end of it, of course, in the transcript they put all capital names, all capitalized names, but that's not the way it appears on the actual proper document. Um, they actually appear in written in proper English, the signatures, and it's irrelevant really um, what that mark looks like. Um, and even if they are accepting the surname it's irrelevant because the fact of the matter is although a surname might be a mark of the system it can't it, it can never control you this is the problem that I'm at this is the problem I'm having with other people is they is they still think that anything that's fictional can control you it's like think about a a father that's called um, I don't know let's say just John Doe and he just names his son John Doe because John Doe Joe Doe jr you know forget the middle names but the, the names exactly the same now the only thing that changes is the age of the man you know when they were when they came into the world let's put it that way that's the only thing that changes um, so the name itself 
can be repeated a number of times. It can be repeated as much and you know if you can repeat the first name the surname is really it do you know what I mean it doesn't really matter um, are you would you be accepting the surname from the fictitious entity which you can't do anyway because you can't have you, a man can't really deal with a fiction not on those not on those not in those ways anyway i'm I'm going around in circles here because it really takes you what this stuff really takes is it really takes sitting down and actually doing some thinking rather than looking for an explanation you have to actually think and use your own bloody brain to come to to this because they're not going to tell you what the rules of natural law are they are not going to tell you that they tell you the basic rules of natural law like you shouldn't kill and you shouldn't take somebody else's stuff and that's really all you need to know but then you need to know how to apply that and how that works and what a fictional entity is and what a real man is there's no doubt in my mind that if you were to put, well, there is a doubt in my mind. If you were to put, let's say, a, a, a for, excuse me, a for example, if you went into court, okay, and you had to deal with a judge, right? I wonder what would happen if you put that judge on notice that you see him as a real man. I mean a simple question to ask a judge when you walk in there, right? not that you want to walk into a court, but and if you do walk in you want to declare the fact that you're not in a boat, you're not on a vessel on the water, you're in a material realm on terra firma and that no fiction can ever have jurisdiction over that, only a real man. That was the first thing, the first statement you want to jump out there with. I don't know, there's a ton of stuff that I would say before I even got into having an argument with, with, the, with the judge. I mean, there's so much stuff that once you get into this, you think, oh, I would ask, I would say that, and I would say that, and I would say that. But I mean, just put them on notice. Say, hey. Are you acting as a real man now? I see you as a real man and I only deal with other real men because I'm a real li living, breathing man. What do you see standing in front of you here? What am I in your eyes? A simple let yes or no will answer this question. Am I dead or alive? Now, what's he going to say to that? Because he knows that in order for him to do anything with you, he's got to say that you're dead. <laughs> He's got to admit that you're dead if he wants to deal with you. You've got to hold him to a simple yes or no answer. I don't want anything in between. It's either yes or no. If he says no, he's going to look like a right div in front of everybody else that doesn't understand the system. <laughs> he's going to say, well, I can't answer that, blah, 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 because I'm not the, you know, he's going to give you some, BS answer, but you've got to hold him to it. I hold it to it, you know, two or three times, you know, until he answers yes or no. Look, I gotta have an answer here. You know, you can't piss potty around this. There's people here that can obviously see I'm a real living, breathing man. What's your answer? I just would wonder how that would go down. You know, it'd be interesting if anybody's out there that's got to go to court, try it. <laughs> try it at your own peril, though. What would probably happen is it, you'd probably they'd probably just say, "Take this, Mister Blah 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 away." <laughs> That's probably what would happen. Bailiff, arrest this. You know, whatever. Take him away. Um, yeah, you probably wouldn't get an answer, but you've got to put him on notice. You've got to say, "Look, I'm gonna hold you responsible as a man." You're not wearing a veil now in front of me. I can see you plain and clear. 
you've got to be, you've got to, you've got to get out of this legal mumbo jumbo, and actually hold the guy responsible. It's the only way to do it, because whenever they hide behind this mask, because you've got to remember that a fiction, a fiction can't actually do anything for itself. It has to have some form of consciousness in order to, for it to work. So this veil that is the fiction has to be given consciousness by the man. Now, you've got to put him on notice. You know, if you're going to give consciousness to a fiction, you're the one that's doing the wrong, you know. But you've got to put him on notice as the man. I'd, go, I'd say, what's your, what's your Christian name so I can deal with you as a man? Because I don't deal with fictional entities. Judge whatever or your honour is fictional to me. I don't deal with that stuff. Well, have you got a driving license? No, I don't have a driving license. There's a, here's a driving license, but that's not me. How can that ever be me? That's a piece of plastic. <laughs> you know. And I don't think you have jurisdiction over that anyway. You might have jurisdiction over the idea of it, but do you have jurisdiction over that piece of plastic there? I don't think so. That car never belonged to you because you're a fiction. That material item there can never belong to you. And this is what I go into with the with the Federal Reserve notes as well and the the, the ten square miles at Washington DC. They can't they cannot have jurisdiction over anything material. I'll tell you what it is. It's exactly out of the Bible. It's worshipping a false deity. It's a belief system. And it says in the Bible, you know, if you worship a... If you, <laughs> not so many words, but if you worship a, a false deity, you're screwed. <laughs> You're out of my house, you know, I'm not, I'm not dealing with you, you're dead to me, you know. You know, you're not a true person, you're wicked. And that's, uh, you know, we're in a, we're in a, we're in a, a system here where people, it's not just as easy as just saying no to it, you know, it's, it's going to take a little bit of work to get to that point. Um, but I'm working on it myself, and I know there's a lot of other people out there working on it. Um, uh, but anyway, the video's long enough. Um, I don't know. There doesn't seem to be anybody else that I'm coming across that is just saying you've got to not deal within their legal jargon. You can't deal with it. Because it's, it is a foreign language. You can't deal with it. And the rules and regulations, it doesn't matter. Even if they write a bunch of shit, right? They write a bunch of documents that aren't written right. It doesn't matter. It's all fiction. Who's going to hold them accountable? What are you going to do? You're going to walk in there and say, look, you're not writing this stuff right. <laughs> it's fictional. You cannot, you cannot walk in and say this isn't, this document isn't written right. Uh, you've got no. The, the fact of the matter is, the real man has no jurisdiction over them either, because it's, it's a ghost. It's nothing. It's BS. It's complete BS. I don't know how to explain it really. I, I'm trying my best here to try and get this, you know try and make it understandable to people but it's difficult you have to make the distinction between what is real which is anything that is tangible a piece of paper okay but the idea behind the piece of paper is not real okay you can write the idea down on the piece of paper but the actual idea itself is not real Okay, at least not to a point, the only way that it can be enforced is by somebody believing in it, believing in that idea, enforcing it on behalf of whoever had the idea, you know. But the actual things themselves, the documents, the pieces of paper, dang it, the pieces of paper, the little 
piece of card with your social security number on it the you know all this stuff that's, you know that stuff that's actually material they have no actual jurisdiction over it you know this idea of handing back this card you know it's the it, this remains the property it cannot never be the property of it just cannot be it cannot this is the problems they have because they cannot work around this system but it's getting to a point where they will eventually be able to work around it as the technology gets there well, they won't fully be able to work around it but they it's getting you know every little extra bit they add in every little flaw they put in there and you still go along with it believe in it is another I don't know I don't know what you call it um, there's no way that it's right what they're doing but somehow in their psychopathic brain it's acceptable <laughs> <laughs> they believe that they have some kind of um, uh, they believe that it's not wrong let's put it that way and if you were to hold the people at the top and say look um, you know technically speaking what they're what they're doing this is another one to get your head wrapped around technically what they're doing is not actually um, well I say it's not wrong it just depends on the way they were to act but you can never know because you can't get to the top person to see what they're saying okay but you know you get to the top person and say, no no you don't have to do any of this this is probably what they would say no this is this is all if you you would never get them on record saying this but this is what the, if you had a one-to-one -one with the per with the man that's at the top he would say oh no you don't have to join in with any of this stuff it's quite obvious that you don't have to join in. It's all it's all a belief system, you know. If you want to join in, that's up to you, you know. And you can leave at any time. And that's the fact of the matter is, you can leave at any time. <laughs> You're not bound by anything that's fictional. <sighs> I think I've exhausted this video. Um, 30 minutes. Is there anything else I wanted to say? Um, no, I can't. The quick recap is, the Declaration of Independence is probably not the Declaration of Independence. It is probably better to call it the Unanimous Declaration of the 13 United States of America. That's number one. So if you're going to refer to it in any kind of a document that you make, um, yeah, I definitely, I don't know, but I definitely write that in there. Um, and then... The only other thing to say is that we've, we've really got to get around this whole thing of looking at the system to have an answer. The system does not have a get out of jail free card for you. There isn't that there. Um, the, the real way out is accepting who you really are accepting who you really are as a real man and then knowing the difference between a fiction and what the real man is and what nature really is well, that's the only real way out um, by all means I'm still you know even, I'm planning on if I ever do that thing you know what do you do you've got I mean you've got to have a driving license don't you You've got to have all the other bits and bobs that go along with it. And at the end of the day, is any of that real? Is even putting your signature on a piece of paper, does that constitute something that's actually real or an idea? Putting your mark on a piece of paper. I've, I'm looking into all this stuff now. There's a question. In the eyes of the legal system, putting your mark on a piece of paper is consent. But when you let's look at natural law and let's make a decision on can you what does that mark mean? 
because I'll go back to the fact that you're changing constantly and you put your mark on a piece of paper that man there made that mark and that man's already changed okay that's not to say if that mark some value transferred to the man with that mark that that value has to be repaid back if he changes his mind but that mark it's not it can I don't know if it can ever be a perpetual mark you know <laughs> even though it sits on the piece of paper and the ink doesn't go anywhere what's the intent can the intent behind that mark be perpetual and I would say no It gets interesting, doesn't it, on how how you get around how you get around the idea of making a contract with another man. And the, I think the fact of the matter is, you you just cannot do it very very easily. And this is the real reason why we have the um, the legal system. And you know what's funny about it is, this may have been a this is where we get into the tool thing. This may have been a tool that was invented a long time ago just simply in order to carry out a slightly more complex transaction <laughs> okay and what it's ended up turning into as with all tools is a way to control um, other people anyway I'm out that's it done thanks for watching